Hamas has announced a new intifada against Israel. A red heifer has been born in the United States. And ISIS is moving further with its aggressions. That's what I'm here to talk about. Shalom, my friends. I have a number of news items to update for you. Uh, Number one, Hamas. Prime Minister Ismail Heniyeh announced this week that in the West Bank, the Intifada against Israel has already begun. Hamas previously prevented Palestinian groups from launching rockets into Israel but not because it believes in the peace process with Israel, and not because it's opposed to harming innocent civilians and children, but rather only in the interest of remaining in power. Once Hamas signed the reconciliation agreement of the, quote, national consensus government, Hamas's strategy changed. This agreement gives them some kind of immunity against Israeli retaliation, and Hamas is now headed towards greater extremism, preparing for a new intifada against Israel, openly holding military drills this month in various parts of the Gaza Strip, preparing for a war against Israel. A volley of rockets from Gaza slammed Israel on Monday morning, June 30th. צה"ל תקף בסוף השבוע מספר רב של מטרות בתגובה לירי לעבר ישראל ברצועת עזה. אנחנו ערוכים להרחיב את הפעולה בהתאם לצורך. And by the way, a red heifer has been born in the United States. We look at Bemidbar, that's the book of Numbers, chapter 19, verse 2, quote, This is a law of the Torah, which Yahweh has commanded, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they bring you a red heifer, a perfect one, in which there is no blemish, and on which a yoke has never come. This is a... uh, scriptural condition that must be met for the building of the third temple in Jerusalem to be met. We are now in the last hour, my friends. And now some more information about ISIS. In my previous video, I showed you how ISIS is an acronym for the Islamic State of Iraq and Al-Sham. But it also stands for the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. And it also stands for the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant. Just thought I'd throw, at, throw that at you so, uh, you know, <laughs> there's no confusion, even though Islam is full of confusion. At any rate, ISIS is now waging war throughout Iraq and Syria. And it has seized millions of dollars in cash and military equipment. ISIS, my friends, is growing exponentially. Israel is now monitoring ISIS aggressively, contemplating troop deployment to the border to stop ISIS from infiltrating Israel. And Jordan is contemplating the same and will be seeking help from the United States and Israel. It's a reported fact that uh, Jordan would be unable to repel a full assault from ISIS without the help of the U.S. and Israel. Just last week, the Syrian Air Force bombed ISIS positions in Iraq 
and recently Jordan bombed ISIS targets which were close to its borders with Iraq. And the U.S. and Iran are conducting drone surveillance on ISIS strongholds. And it's important to note that Jordan and Egypt are the only Arab countries that have a peace treaty with Israel. The weird thing here is, if Israel provides support to Jordan, it would become a de facto ally of Iran, who is dedicated to Israel's destruction. The fact is, my friends, that reports out of Syria and Iraq are getting worse daily as ISIS employs horrifying acts against infidels, not only through point-blank assassinations, rape, and torture, but also through crucifixions. The image you see behind me is the abandoned St. Elijah's Monastery. This is the oldest Christian monastery in Iraq located in the Nineveh province, just south of the city of Mosul. I thought I'd give you some background information about Iraq. Seventy-five years ago, Iraq was a pleasant land which had many large Jewish and Christian populations living peacefully there. ISIS still driving through Iraq towards Baghdad executing infidels in its bloody path has led Iraqis to now say that they believe their Christian community is facing extinction just like their Jewish community did previously. Most Iraqi Christians belong to the ethnic group known as Assyrians also known as Chaldeans and Syriacs. These are the offspring of Sumerians, the original people of Iraq. The Assyrians conquered the northern kingdom of Israel and expelled the Jewish people to Mesopotamia. This is what led to the birth of Iraq's Christian community. Also, Mesopotamia's successors, the Babylonians, were the ones who destroyed the first temple in 587 BCE. Christianity was brought to Iraq by Thomas during the first century CE, making it one of the oldest Christian communities in the world. Today, the Assyrians dwell in northern Iraq's Nineveh Plains, where they have faced a constant barrage of persecution, mass killings, and expulsions since the invasion of Islam more than 1,300 years ago. The Assyrians have no military, nor do they have any neighboring countries to help them. Now, since the invasion of ISIS, Water and electricity have been cut, there's a shortage of cooking gas, clean water is running out, and there's a fear of illness breaking out where the refugees have fled. Some 12 years ago, approximately 130,000 Christians lived in Mosul, Iraq's second largest city. Now, since the ISIS invasion, just a couple of weeks ago, there are approximately 2,000 Christians remaining in Mosul. The prophet Jonah is buried in Mosul, and Avraham, that's Abraham, was supposedly born in that area of Iraq. The Jewish population that once filled Iraq with its wonderful colors is now long gone. And, as the ISIS invasion continues, Iraq's Christian leaders fear that this may very well be the end of Christianity in Iraq. I'll be watching the news and uh, bringing you any updates that uh, I think are important for you to hear. As always, I hope and I pray, my friends, that this 
video is a beracha to you and yours. Thank you for your support. Until next time, shalom. Now two thousand years have gone by, it's another working day. Some would rather let it lie, but the question still remains.